Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is reconstruction and reunification of the South after the Civil War. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about this very, very significant and important historical topic, uh, Dr. Revis Mitchell from Fisk University. And of course, Dr. Mitchell, let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Thank you, Dr. Haynes. It's a pleasure to be invited. And to tell you, Dr. Mitchell, how indeed uh, happy we are to have you here. Uh, this is the beginning of a new season for us, and uh, we've had you on just numerous of times, uh, a number of times. Yes. And, uh, each time, as we said before, you bring us such excellent information. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we often think about uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, video that we did with you on slavery and the That's Emancipation right. Proclamation and all of those things. And so what we'd like to do uh, today, Dr. Mitchell, is to uh, recognize that uh, this is really the beginning of the voting season right. uh, here and so to uh, sort of bring a topic in that would... Uh, deal with uh, the suffrage and uh, the whole problems that uh, came out of the reconstruction of the South. But before we get into that, Dr. Mitchell, let's have you to give us some information about your background, your right. education, right. and uh, what, in a real sense, motivated you to do the things that you're doing. Well, thank you, Dr. Haney. Um, it's been wonderful over the last almost 30 years now. Uh, I've been on the faculty at Fisk for 20 years. I'm a native of Nashville, educated in the Catholic and public schools of Nashville, attended undergraduate school at Fisk and did a master's degree at Tennessee State and a doctoral degree at Middle Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. But I guess this morning I'm, I'm going to rather surprise you. I was looking back over some notes mm -hmm. and 30 years ago this year in 1972 mm -hmm. I was invited to Vanderbilt to hear a young professor who they had brought there <laughs> named James Haney. Okay, that was, that's <laughs> I, a long time. That's, I, that's, I, that's I, I, was, I was brand new <clears throat> faculty mm -hmm. at MTSU and okay. you reach a point in life where you're looking through mm -hmm. your notes and papers okay. and mm -hmm. there was a young man there with a with a large afro and a dashiki okay. named James Haney. And okay, I was down was, at MTS, okay, MTS very good. beginning our teaching careers. That's that exactly was about it. The time. And of course, that's what we, when we met one another. That's right. That's, that's right. That's been that's a long right. time. So, so it's, it's been, I think, mm -hmm. good uh, over the years, the things we've discussed and the, really the popularization of history. Mm -hmm. It's really made the teaching of where students come to college now with a great yearning and desire to know about our national mm -hmm. past. Mm -hmm. uh, since September 11th, one year, one year ago, or the year 2001, Americans have tried to find their place in the world. So it's a, still a thrilling profession mm -hmm. discussing American history and particularly African American mm -hmm. history. Okay, I, I'll tell you, Dr. Mitchell, let's talk about uh, the period of Reconstruction, the period that followed right. immediately after the war. And I think you noticed that when we uh, introduced the topic today, we said uh, Reconstruction and reunification exactly. of the South after the Civil War and et cetera. Exactly. Let's talk about that and, and let's have you to start talking about it by talking about uh, what you consider to be the Reconstruction period in American history well, and sort of bring our audience into what well, we're doing. Well, the Reconstruction here. period is one of the most vital periods in the country's history. Uh, generally, when history is taught, high school and college level, we teach it from exploration to 1865. Mm -hmm. We pick up with the war and Reconstruction. I tell people the Reconstruction period did for me as an African American what the end of the American Revolution did not do. It provided me with the vote. It provided me, it freed me. So it's a, what we call a watershed event in United States history. What we sometimes don't realize is that it was a great political struggle. So a political struggle between a North and a South that had been engaged in war for several years. But it was also a political struggle between a president and the Congress. Uh, Reconstruction was not easy. Mm -hmm. Reconstruction was not intended to be easy. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln, who really did not believe the country could be divided by war, wanted to make the reconstruction process quick. Mm -hmm. He wanted the country back in place. He couldn't deal with a disunited union. But members of his own party, the Republican mm -hmm. Party, who had fought that war, mm -hmm. disagreed. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make reconstruction of the South by Southerners virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. They wanted to collect emotion from a war effort. They wanted to punish the South. Mm -hmm. So as much as Reconstruction may be painted as reunion, before there could be reunion, there had to be a bit of disunion. Mm -hmm. uh, as the young people say, we had to pay the crime, pay for the crimes. And in the eyes of Northern Republicans, radicals within Lincoln's party, mm -hmm. the crime had been ever leaving the Union. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a struggle. Reconstruction is a point mm -hmm. of struggle. Um, Politics. Lincoln initially wanted 10% of the South, 10% of those who had voted in the election of 1850, mm -hmm. to swear allegiance. 
But then you've got to look at who voted in 1850. Mm -hmm. Women didn't vote. Certainly black people didn't vote. Mm -hmm. And those who didn't own land didn't vote. So only a small percentage of those actually voted. Of that, he only wanted 10% mm -hmm. to swear allegiance. And he would declare states reunited. Now, is this what they meant by Lincoln having uh, what might be considered a very, very mild and uh, very, very, mild, very, very sympathetic mild. policy toward yeah. the South? And really, it was, it was toward the South, but really it was his support of the Union. Mm -hmm. He wanted that Union back and functioning. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what he'd argued the war was fought about. And many people missed the fact that the war wasn't fought as much about slavery as it was about maintaining the Union. Mm -hmm. Go on. Uh -huh. Ma maintaining that Union. Mm -hmm. uh, Lincoln hoped that the union would be back and functioning mm -hmm. within a year. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's such a disunion in the country mm -hmm. that Lincoln's assassination is brought on by the question of this reuniting the union. Mm -hmm. the, the ultimate question uh, were those Southerners who were upset with Lincoln. He had the radicals. Mm -hmm. They're upset with Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Lincoln really is, is in, in a state where he, he can't carry out what he wishes. Mm -hmm. uh, when, the, when his bill goes to the Congress, his mm -hmm. Wade Davis bill that was brought about Reconstruction, mm -hmm. it doesn't go anyplace. Mm -hmm. But Congress stifles it. Then they bring forth a bill. And when that bill comes to Lincoln, the radical plan, he lets it lay on his desk and mm -hmm. his Congress mm -hmm. go out of session. Mm -hmm. He exercises his, his pocket veto. Mm -hmm. So the struggle that ensues after the Civil War is as much a battle between a president Good. and Congress mm -hmm. as we've ever experienced uh, mm -hmm. presently in, in the world situation where we're looking at the events and play, planning war, or looking at war, mm -hmm. and there's a struggle between the president and the Congress, that's very reminiscent of that mm -hmm. era mm -hmm. after Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a detrimental era mm -hmm. for the entire nation. Mm -hmm. It's very detrimental for the South. Mm -hmm. It's very detrimental for African Americans, mm -hmm. because caught up in the struggle, we are exploited, we are exploited. So we have to look at an actual struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, the, it's decided that the Army of the North will occupy the South. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there will be a period of time before there will be voting in the South. They decide, those who control the Congress decide, that they want the Southern states to swear they had always been loyal. Mm -hmm. And to many of the Southern state leaders, this was upsetting because they hadn't been loyal. They had formed a confederacy. They had formed a separate union. Mm -hmm. So the struggle for Reconstruction continues. Caught up in that struggle, will be the emancipation and the vote of the black Good. man. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing more troubling to Southerners than to see those who were formerly enslaved suddenly marching to the polls and voting. And so, uh, and so Dr. Mitchell, as we uh, uh, near this uh, first commercial break that we have here today, uh, we find that it, in, in this whole struggle that will uh, erupt after the war, which is to say that this is almost a continuation That's right. of the uh, intensity of the uh, emotions between the North and the South. That's it might right. no longer be the battle as such, but it is emotional and, 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 and quite uh, involved. But now, one of the things that we'd like for you to talk about uh, after we come back uh, from this break is the uh, citizenship rights of Africans mm -hmm. during this time. Because I think we know that uh, in 1865, the 13th Amendment is passed that will give them uh, freedom. That's right. Uh, but now, the 14th Amendment, that's uh, the, this whole we'll idea hope. of African-American citizenship, exactly. I think that that's, that's one of the most important elements that we uh, could uh, deal with at this particular point, I mean, in this part of the, uh, uh, the show this morning. Exactly. And we will always remember that freedom and equality are not synonymous. Good. Very good. And, and, and of course, uh, when we take, when, after we take this first uh, commercial break, we'll come back and we'll give you an, an opportunity to talk about uh, the Reconstruction Act of 1867 and how uh, Africans were eventually uh, brought into the whole political process because Very there good. were uh, quite a, a bit of opposition. Right. Uh, in the South and in, to a lesser degree in the northern states in reference to uh, African-American uh, participation in politics and citizenship and whatnot. And I want you to uh, sort of lay that out as exactly. you uh, so well do uh, in, in some of these other uh, uh, parts that we've, we've dealt with before. And of course, we'll be back with uh, our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. It's a scorching hot day. Imagine being trapped in a parked car. The temperature inside is rising. Now imagine that you're wearing a fur coat. Leaving your dog in a hot car is not only uncomfortable, it's dangerous. 
If it's too hot for you, it's far worse for him because unlike us, he can't perspire to cool down. And within minutes, the temperature, even with the windows down a little, can exceed 100 degrees. So on warm days, please be kind. Leave your dog safely at home. Hi, I'm Trisha Yearwood. I lost both my grandmothers to lung cancer. To learn more about lung cancer and women, call 1-866-HER-CANCER. Someday, I'll be a ballerina, just like them. Someday, this won't just be my wish. Someday, I won't be sick. Dear Abby, I'm scared. I think my mom is showing signs of Alzheimer's disease. What should I do? Signed, frightened. Dear Frightened, when my mom first began showing signs of memory loss, I was scared too. So I called the Alzheimer's Association for help. I'm Dear Abby. If you or someone you love is experiencing memory loss, take my advice. Contact the Alzheimer's Association. They help families like ours. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. The topic is uh, the reunification of the South after the Civil War or Reconstruction. And of course, we're talking to the professor of history at Fish University, Dr. Revis Mitchell. And of course, Dr. Mitchell, uh, we promised that during this second segment, we would allow you to uh, talk about African-American political participation right. uh, during this period and how uh, Africans became involved in the whole political process and uh, the influence right. of their involvement during the time. Well, the, the beginning is the 13th Amendment, which frees the slaves. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the sort of misnomers of history, mm -hmm. Lincoln issued a proclamation of emancipation, but it really freed no slaves. Mm -hmm. The proclamation was aimed at those southern states. It was a more war measure. It said if they didn't cease fighting, their slaves would be free. But none of the South coalesced to his demands. Mm -hmm. So slavery continued to the end of the war. It was an act of Congress, the 13th Amendment, which freed the slaves. Again, it's the radical Republicans. Mm -hmm. And uh, as wonderful an act as freeing slaves was, it was also a way of saying to the South that these people who you've held, these people who much of your economy mm -hmm. is based upon, and slavery was an economic activity, mm -hmm. are now free. Mm -hmm. The 14th Amendment will make them citizens of the United States. Mm -hmm. And then amendments follow the 15th and whatever, mm -hmm. and they're given the vote. Mm -hmm. Again, as, as wonderful as the act was, as marvelous as it was, mm -hmm. it's also a continuation of that struggle between yeah. the North and the South. Suddenly, this Congress, still seen as Northern because the Southern states have been reconstructed, goes in and provides the vote. It puts together a whole new electorate in the South, mm -hmm. uh, a large population, which for a brief period of time, mm -hmm. late 1860s, will control the Southern vote. Mm -hmm. So once you have reconstruction and blacks are allowed to vote, uh, the Dunning School of Historians, we may yeah, mm -hmm. they describe <clears throat> it as black reconstruction. reconstruction very good. The, the blackness is the fact that some few blacks hold office, mm -hmm. never a majority. One interesting political point, though, once black people have the vote, once mm -hmm. those former slaves and many of those free blacks who were never slaves have the vote, mm -hmm. they aren't terribly punitive. Mm -hmm. We don't find during black reconstruction blacks demanding mm -hmm. any punishment of the South. The Federal Congress mm -hmm. would, would uh, disenfranchise those Confederate leaders who were wealthy those who were leaders in the southern governments, they would be in prison. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't acts of black legislatures. Mm -hmm. it would, in fact, throughout the South, during black reconstruction, you really find a time when black members of state mm -hmm. legislatures, uh, black members of city councils and yeah. all, mm -hmm. will reestablish and rebuild the South. Mm -hmm. In Tennessee, for example, yeah. mm -hmm. the Tennessee legislature, once blacks are a member of it, Samuel McElwee mm -hmm. will propose public education. Yeah, mm -hmm. You had never had public education in the South prior to the Civil War. Mm -hmm. It's during Black Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. Public education for all groups mm -hmm. in the South. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly this meant for the former slaves a chance, the greatest chance for education. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, when blacks vote, 
uh, at national elections, they will send two senators. Mm -hmm. And it was only during this political time that we will have two black members of the Senate, mm -hmm. uh, Hiram Revels and Blanche mm -hmm. Kelso Bruce, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out of Mississippi. And again, they put forth very progressive legislation. It's under Kelso Bruce that we see the establishment of public education and public colleges mm -hmm. in Mississippi. The University of Mississippi is strengthened, but there's also the creation of Alcorn mm -hmm. AME, and there's also the creation of colleges for African Americans. We see schools and hospitals. So during this period, even though there's chaos, we find valuable assistance by mm -hmm. African Americans to the American dream. Mm -hmm. The question is, though, still at the national level. Many in the South are upset. They are chagrined. There's still the struggle. The, the question of why black reconstruction was so disfavored in the South, mm -hmm. because again, it took this electorate and it empowered them. It gave them control. Mm -hmm. When Andrew, after Lincoln's unfortunate assassination, mm -hmm. a second president, Andrew Johnson, mm -hmm. from Tennessee, comes to power. Mm -hmm. Andrew Johnson also is no friend of the African American. He's not pro uh, support for African Americans. He is pro, however, mm -hmm. in supporting the Northern pro Viewpoint. He's mm -hmm. pro-union, mm -hmm. which is not synonymous with being pro-African-American. Mm -hmm. Andrew Johnson once stated he wished he could relieve the drudgery of every white family by providing them with free Good. slaves. Mm -hmm. So that's not a man who's pro-African-American. <laughs> but he is pro-union. Mm -hmm. He follows Lincoln's situation. He follows Lincoln's demand. Mm -hmm. So while Reconstruction is going on, mm -hmm. the political battles continue mm -hmm. between those who want to see the Union reunited, but also those who want to punish the South. Mm -hmm. The biggest struggle develops within the Republican Party, mm -hmm. the radical and liberal wing. Mm -hmm. And what they're most radical about is the treatment of the South. Mm -hmm. In this, though, the, the, the nation moves for 20 years, and there's a struggle. Mm -hmm. Eventually, there'll be a compromise. Mm -hmm. Politically, the compromise will be the removal of federal troops from the South. Mm -hmm. The Union is reunited, mm -hmm. but the African-American vote is mm -hmm. gradually disappeared. Mm -hmm. New legislatures begin to put in new rules. There are no troops left in the South mm -hmm. to make sure that African Americans mm -hmm. can vote. Intimidation becomes a part of the political mm -hmm. process. Vote, voters are intimidated. Voters are outright not allowed to vote. Voting precincts, are, voting records yeah, are mm -hmm. not kept. Votes are cast out, cast in African American mm -hmm. precincts, and eventually the great hope of the Civil War mm -hmm. diminishes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so uh, when you talk about the uh, uh, military rule of the South, explain that because I think what you're saying here is that for a time, the, um, after the war, that the military, the, the uh, national military That's right. actually controls and rules. Talk about they this. They occupied the occupied South. Occupied the South. Now, what are you saying? Here, here? in Tennessee, mm -hmm. the general in charge was Clinton B. Fisk. Mm -hmm. Consequently, when a school is open, it's named John General, but they occupy the South. Mm -hmm. They treat it as conquered territory. Mm -hmm. Southerners are treated as those who were defeated in war. Mm -hmm. The great irony is, is that the two national leaders, Lincoln and Johnson, mm -hmm. didn't want to <coughs> alienate Southern voters. Mm -hmm. They hoped for reunion, but you couldn't have that. Mm -hmm. So the main point that Southern leaders want in this period of Reconstruction, mm -hmm. the first most visible sign of reunion they mm -hmm. want is the removal of federal troops. Mm -hmm. But once those troops are removed, who is going to protect the mm -hmm. former slaves? Mm -hmm. now, 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 did these troops uh, actually protect uh, b b the slaves while they were there? I mean, what was the relationship between They protected the, the federal government's uh, interest. Mm -hmm. Many of them oversaw the construction of railroads. Mm -hmm. Consequently, here in Nashville, you have a Union station built by the Union, Union Army. Army. Mm -hmm. One of the desires of the Army was to relative the railroads so the South could be brought back into business mm -hmm. and businesses. And there was a great amount of money in rebuilding the South. Mm -hmm. Important northern companies mm -hmm. make that money. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, some scholars point out that the African American is compromised by the rebuilding of the South. Mm -hmm. The North and the South come together again on economic interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this, this, this was really a critical period. Now, we often talk about critical periods in American history, but this was really a critical period that uh, finally introduced uh, the African American into the politics. Oh, and the, and the period after Reconstruction mm -hmm. is constantly referred to as the development of the New South. Mm -hmm. We need to look at what's really so new mm -hmm. about this South. Okay, very good. And of course, let us take this uh, second commercial break, uh, Dr. Mitchell, and we'll be back with our audience uh, following this very, very short commercial break. In our nation of plenty, one in five children faces hunger every day. America's Second Harvest feeds 23 million people every year. 
9 million are children. Help feed a hungry child. Volunteer at a food bank or pantry. Organize a food drive at your school or place of work. Get your friends and co-workers involved. Visit secondharvest.org to find out how you can help. Together, we can end hunger in America. My mother died of diabetes, and I have it too. But with the help of a registered dietitian, I've learned to eat properly and live life to its fullest. If you have diabetes, take it seriously. Seek the help of an RD, and you'll see life is something to sing about. These hands hold tight. These hands love. These hands support. These hands create. These hands save lives. To empower your hands to help make a difference, call the American Heart Association at 877-242-4277 for a CPR class near you. These hands are wise. Korea, the Forgotten War. Captain Lewis Millett, U.S. Army, is wounded leading a charge against heavy enemy fire. He was awarded the Medal of Honor. Let us not forget that freedom is not free. Noise. There's more of it in your life than you think. Everyday sounds from household appliances to traffic. Even a crowded restaurant can hit 85 decibels. That's the level audiologists know can cause permanent hearing loss. So keep an eye on your ears and visit ASHA.org, the American Speech-Language Hearing Association. Thank you and welcome back to this final segment of the show for today. The topic is the reunification of the South after the war and of course we're talking to Dr. Revis Mitchell, a professor of history and chairman of the department at uh, Fish University. And of course Dr. Mitchell, let's give you an opportunity during this last segment to sort of uh, wrap up some of the things dealing with uh, African American uh, voting and African American political participation. I think you've already given us uh, his entrance into politics uh, shortly after the war and the impact that he had on politics, but let's uh, expand that and talk about his removal and some of those things that are associated with it. While those Union soldiers in the South, they protect the black voter. Mm -hmm. they, may, they may not protect him personally, but they keep the polls open. Mm -hmm. They make sure that people can vote. Mm -hmm. The South is frustrated. Mm -hmm. The South has lost the Civil War. Uh, the great dream that the South had been built on was the dream of large plantation ownership mm -hmm. and having slaves. And now that dream is gone. Uh, I, I, I can't appreciate or I can't support it, but I can understand mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. So also the South has lost white majority rule, mm -hmm. white voter rule, not majority, but, but white rule. Mm -hmm. We see certain emotional activities. In North Carolina, we see the regulator movement. Mm -hmm. We see the Knights of the White Chameleon. In Tennessee, we see the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, these are organizations built upon frustration. And to vent that frustration, they use intimidation. Yeah. One of their targets were black voters, mm -hmm. encouraging black people not to vote. Mm -hmm. um, the, the troops encounter the Klan, but on the national level, that same frustration is, is mm -hmm. being looked at. Economically, it's costing the North to keep those troops in the South. Mm -hmm. It's a period of national disunion. Mm -hmm. Eventually, a political deal is struck. The um, politicians, North and South, mm -hmm. get together. And they decide that in order to rebuild the South, mm -hmm. to, to discontinue that cost, that federal troops will be removed. Mm -hmm. Once federal troops are removed, and once states are allowed back in, we see a number of precocious acts, of uncertain mm -hmm. acts. Mm -hmm. We see the application of poll taxes. Mm -hmm. We see the application of literacy testing. Mm -hmm. All of this is to disenfranchise. Mm -hmm. So all of the gains made by the Civil War, mm -hmm. the voting rights gains, <coughs> are lost for African Americans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Consequently, when the African American can't vote, his representatives can't mm -hmm. vote. Mm -hmm. Well, his representatives are removed. Mm -hmm. With the representatives removed from government, local and state, who is to protect the vested interests of the former slave? Mm -hmm. uh, who is to protect the vested interests of the underclass? Mm -hmm. um, the South, after the Civil War, needed an underclass. Mm -hmm. They needed someone to work the plantations. Mm -hmm. They needed someone to share crop. They needed to make sure that the African American didn't all, didn't all flee mm -hmm. outside of the South. Mm -hmm. 
So we see a number of actions and that weren't just outright racism, mm -hmm. they were also political and economic acts mm -hmm. carried on by a South with no protection for the African American. Sometimes with the state legislatures involved. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, because the same persons who control the legislatures mm -hmm. were those who control the Southern economy, mm -hmm. were the large landholders. Mm -hmm. So we see precocious laws developed, reinstituting a system just as harsh, mm -hmm. if not harsher, than slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly the experience of the African American in the South after the Civil War and in the United States between 1860 and 1900 demonstrated the importance of having the vote mm -hmm. and exercising the vote. Mm -hmm. uh, once you lose control of that vote, then you have no real voice mm -hmm. in government. Mm -hmm. you, have no re you have no voice to select people who will protect you. You have no voice to select people who will enhance your position mm -hmm. in a nation. Well, and, and so Dr. Mitchell, essentially, uh, 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 are you saying that uh, uh, as long as Africans were able to participate in the politics of the South uh, during that period shortly after the war up until the time that they were eliminated in 1890, that they had some influence, uh, influence enough to, uh, in a real sense, control legislation, at least That's deal right. with legislation. That's right. That's right. But once right. they were removed uh, in 1890, and they will be removed until 1960, they no longer have any kind of influence, and se so segregation become, comes they out. They become victims. Uh, segregation become, is one of the uh, that's right. great uh, divisions. Of the, well, the, it's also the emotional stress still mm -hmm. of the South. Mm -hmm. The South doesn't know how to deal with its northern industrialized counterpart. Mm -hmm. The North is becoming visibly more well-off economically than the South. Mm -hmm. And the South needs someone to scapegoat. Mm -hmm. So we see, again, these precocious laws and actions. Uh, slavery gave automatic status to a free man. Mm -hmm. Any free man was better than a slave. Mm -hmm. After slavery, we see the beginnings of institutionalized racism, mm -hmm. not just in the South, but certainly in the South. Mm -hmm. So status is accorded based upon race. race. Mm -hmm. The previous advantage that had been enjoyed in, in freedom was now acquainted to race. Mm -hmm. So we began to see the concept of racism, mm -hmm. the white superiority, mm -hmm. based nothing on nothing but race. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, and, and of course, uh, Dr. Mitchell, over this last uh, minute, let me uh, thank you and uh, to uh, say how very, very uh, appreciative we are to uh, have you well, it's to always, come by. It's always a pleasure to come on. Yeah, it's but, always a pleasure to be a part of something that's very informative. Yeah, but I think you, 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 you just bring some, some excellent information to us. And what we've been able to do over the many uh, years, as we've indicated, is to uh, use this information and video cassettes and whatever and to expose our young people to them. And, and, and we find that they are very, very interested in, uh, in many of your uh, uh, statements. And especially, you, uh, 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 I really wouldn't want to uh, leave without saying something about uh, the Fist Jubilee Singers, the story of the Fist Jubilee Singers. Well, thank that you. you it's, it's been a Kwame pleasure. Did. And hopefully we'll do other programs and discuss other topics. Okay, very good. Because it's always a pleasure to be a part of comments with Dr. Okay, and I certainly appreciate that. And <laughs> let me encourage others to uh, then tune in next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning. Appreciate it.